The sleep-wake system in the creation. The sleep-wake system, which regulates the life of the body, consists of three hormones secreted by the pineal gland during the night. Melatonin, MLT, was the first hormone identified in the pineal gland by Lerner in 1958. It is not the sleep hormone. It is the neuroprotective hormone. It protects neurons from the destructive action of free radicals. 6-methoxyharmalin, 6-MH, is the second hormone identified in the pineal gland by McIsaac in 1961. 6-methoxyharmalin has extremely high psychostimulant properties, comparable with LSD. This is the wakefulness and awareness hormone, and more generally, daytime wakefulness hormone. Valentonin, VLT, is the third hormone identified in the pineal gland by Jean-Bernard Fortillon in 1994. Valentonin is the real sleep hormone. It is the nighttime hormone. Its identification was the key for discovering the sleep-wake system. The pineal gland or epiphysis cerebri is a small endocrine gland of about 8 millimeters in size. It secretes these three hormones simultaneously. This secretion is triggered by the suprachiasmatic nucleus, located above the optic chiasm, on the retinohypothalmic projection of the optical nerve. How does this happen? The cells of the retina perceive ambient luminosity. This information is processed by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. When night falls, it triggers the secretion by the epiphysis of these three hormones for eight hours. This corresponds to the shortest duration of night, between 10 p.m and 6 a.m. at the summer solstice. As a real biological clock, the suprachiasmatic nucleus punctuates the life of the body by stretches of 24 hours, by adapting it to its lifestyle and to its environment. In this way, for a person who is used to go to bed at 10 p.m., the suprachiasmatic nucleus will trigger, via a nerve path, the secretion of the three hormones by the pineal gland from 10 p.m., since the biosynthesis of the hormones only occurs away from light. But in any case, the secretion of the three hormones by the pineal gland will continue for eight hours. In our example, the secretion of the three pineal hormones will stop at 6 a.m. And this is regardless of the period of the year or the duration of the night. In the pineal gland, the consecutive biosyntheses of the three hormones are carried out from serotonin in three successive acetylation steps under the action of a same enzyme, N-acetyltransferase, N-A-T. Melatonin being an intermediate step in the biochemical cascade, the measurement of its concentration in blood plasma from 1 a.m. is used as a marker of the secretion of the three pineal hormones and therefore of the condition of the sleep-wake system. As their biosynthesis gradually occurs in the pineal gland, the three hormones are released in the blood. They will be distributed in the body and attain their sites of action. Here are the changes in the plasma concentrations of the three hormones for 24 hours. As regards valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin, two different periods may be distinguished. A period which lasts from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., during which the concentrations of VLT in the body are greater than those of 6M8. During this period, the body is in the sleep mode. A period of activity which lasts from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., during which the prevalence of 6-MH causes the body to pass into the wake mode. The distribution and removal kinetics of both of these hormones in the body are at the basis of the alternation of the sleep and wake modes. We shall demonstrate over 24 hours the changes in the concentrations of valentonin and of 6-methoxyharmalin in parallel with the behaviour of this subject, who goes to bed every evening at 10 p.m. For eight hours between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. during the rest period, physiological sleep repairs and restores his body. From 6 a.m., regenerated by a night's sleep, our subject enters an activity phase, work and leisure. Next, tired by a day of activity, our subject reaches his bed for a well-deserved rest. We should note that at 10 p.m., the energy of our subject is no longer supported by the daytime hormone. 6-MH has completely disappeared from the body. 
The behaviour of our subject results from the opposite actions of valentonin and of 6-methoxyharmalin on specific receptors. The 5-HT2C receptors of serotonin, the alpha-2 receptors of noradrenaline, the D1 and D2 receptors of dopamine. Therefore, between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., during its prevalence period in the body, valentonin reduces awareness by activation of the serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors, which has the effect of maintaining the sleep condition in our subject. Valentonin reduces the blood pressure and the heart rate by activating noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors. Valentonin causes muscle relaxation by activation of the dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. Conversely, between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., during its prevalence period in the body, 6-methoxyharmalin increases awareness by antagonism of the serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors, which has the effect of maintaining the wakefulness condition of our subject. 6-methoxyharmalin increases blood pressure and heart rate by antagonism of the noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors. 6-methoxyharmalin causes muscle contraction by antagonism of the dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. In fact, both of these two hormones for day and night ensure regulation of all the organs of the psychic and vegetative lives by modulating the responses of specific receptors to the seven main neurotransmitters serotonin, noradrenaline, dopamine, adrenaline, histamine, GABA and acetylcholine and by modulating the secretions of the seven endocrine glands of the body hypophysis, thyroid gland, thymus, adrenal glands, pancreas, ovaries, and testicles. How was the sleep-wake system designed for ensuring total regulation of the body with only two hormones, valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin? With melatonin, the pharmacological actions of these three hormones are in perfect correlation with their chemical structures. Using this chart, let us examine the pharmacological consequences of the successive chemical reactions during the three acetylation steps, enabling the serotonin to valentonin transformation. Let us examine the transformation from serotonin to melatonin. It takes place in two chemical reactions. The first reaction is the first enzymatic acetylation, which grafts an acetyl group, COCH3, on the amino group, NH2. It preserves the amino group from oxidation by monoamine oxidase, MAO, which very rapidly destroys the ethylamine chains of serotonin, of noradrenaline, and of dopamine. It precedes the second enzymatic acetylation, which will allow the transition to 6-methoxyharmalin. The second chemical reaction is a methylation of the hydroxyl group, HO, in position 5 on the molecule of N-acetylserotonin. It leads to melatonin, in which the hydrophilic hydroxyl group is replaced with a lipophilic methoxy group, H3CO. This group enables the molecules of melatonin, 6-methoxyharmalin and of valentonin, having become soluble in lipids, to acquire the status of a hormone. These hormones are released in the bloodstream and are distributed throughout the body. On the other hand, like all the neurotransmitters incapable of crossing the biological barriers and of circulating in the body, serotonin is not a hormone. It remains in the pineal gland, where it plays its role of precursor of the three hormones during the nocturnal sleep period, while melatonin is secreted into the blood vessels gradually during its biosynthesis. During the rest period, the secreted melatonin eliminates the oxygenated free radicals present in all the tissues of the body. These free radicals are produced by breathing. Two main examples of these free radicals are the superoxide anion O2- radical and the hydroxyl HO radical. These are oxygenated compounds with one single electron. They're extremely reactive and lead to the gradual destruction of the body's cells and the neurons in particular. 
Thanks to its powerful reductive properties via the carbon atom located in position 2, the melatonin traps these free radicals by transforming itself into 2-oxomelatonin, which is consequently eliminated in the blood. The distribution of melatonin in brain tissue from 10 p.m. traps the oxygenated free radicals that have accumulated during the activity period. Simultaneously, these free radicals are reduced and the melatonin is oxidized into 2-oxomelatonin, which is consequently eliminated in the blood. At 6 a.m., as pineal secretion ends, nerve tissues are purified via this process. Second acetylation step, passing from melatonin to 6-methoxyharmalin. This second acetylation causes cyclization of the side chain of melatonin, which leads to 6-methoxyharmalin derived with the tricyclic backbone called beta-carboline. In serotonin and melatonin, the ethylamino chain may assume different conformations in 3D space, thanks to free 360-degree rotations around the carbon-carbon bonds, which connect this chain to the indole ring. In the beta-carboline backbone, the conformation of the ethylamino sequence is blocked. It cannot change, since it is included in a ring. The various serotonergic, noradrenergic and dopaminergic receptors can only be activated by conformations specific to their neurotransmitter. The stereochemical configuration of 6-methoxyharmalin exactly corresponds to the conformations specific to the activation of the serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors, noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors and dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. Because of these analogies, 6-methoxyharmalin will be able to be placed in proximity to the 5-HT2C, alpha-2, D1 and D2 receptors and to prevent by blocking a portion of the molecule of neurotransmitters from access to the recognition sites of these receptors. Let us take the example of serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors localized in the annular protrusion and the medulla oblongata. The stereochemical configuration of 6-methoxyharmalin, analogous to that of serotonin, when existing in the 5-HT2C conformation, will prevent a portion of the serotonin molecules from specifically accessing these 5-HT2C receptors. The result of this is a decrease in transduction among these neuroinhibitory neurons with an increase in awareness, which maintains the awakened condition during the activity period between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. in our example. Third acetylation step, passing from 6-methoxyharmalin to valentonin. During this third acetylation step, connecting an acetyl group onto the nitrogen atom, N, of the 6-methoxyharmalin molecule, causes reversal of the pharmacological properties and transforms 6-methoxyharmalin, the wake and daytime hormone, into valentonin, the sleep and nighttime hormone. The conformation of valentonin, identical with that of 6-methoxyharmalin, also allows it to specifically access the three types of receptors. By means of its new acetyl group, valentonin establishes hydrogen bonds with the three types of receptors and makes them more sensitive to their respective neurotransmitters. For example, valentonin will increase the stimulation of the 5-HT2C receptors and maintain the sleep condition by reducing wakefulness during the night. The result of marvellous concordances, the pharmacokinetic properties of 6-methoxyharmalin and of valentonin, produced at the same time in the pineal gland, are perfectly adapted to the prevalences of both hormones and to their alternation at 6 a.m. and at 10 p.m., not only in the blood, but also at the sites of their action. So many marvellous concordances enabling our body to alternate between the sleep mode and the wake mode with only two hormones. Valentonin and 6-methoxyharmalin specifically modulate the serotonergic 5-HT2C receptors, noradrenergic alpha-2 receptors, dopaminergic D1 and D2 receptors. The proof in 3D.